Here comes part three of understanding chemical equilibria uh, using the FET simulation. So in this case uh, we're going to introduce uh, a new idea, activation energy, but we're still building on the previous ideas of Boltzmann's distribution. So for, the, uh, for this we'll pop up Boltzmann's distribution and we're going to do some pre-interpretation here or I'm going to do some explaining of some background ideas. First of all remember that Boltzmann's basically means we're translating, uh, sorry, not basically means, with Boltzmann's we need to uh, translate kinetic energy into speed. So this graph means slow, faster, 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 really fast, really fast. This axis means um, lots up here and hardly any down here. So this scale goes from hardly any to a whole bunch and anything in, in between. So this graph says how many of the particles, how many of these particles right here are moving really, really, really fast. Well, really, really, really fast on the graph is over here. So I'm going to track up and then stop and come across. And the question, how many are moving really fast? And the answer is hardly any. And what about the question, how many of them are moving kind of like at half between speeds or between half the speeds I see? So if this is really, really fast and this is not moving at all, so half speed would be right in here. Track up and track across to here. And the answer is a little bit less than half, but certainly if this is hardly any and this is a lot, we're going to say, well, there's going to be some. And there's a bunch right here that have this particular speed here. A little bit lower than I would say the speed average, but um, that's just the way Boltzmann's, uh, that's just the way nature distributes the speeds. So now we're going to turn this on and we're going to see whether or not we can see Boltzmann's distribution. So actually I'll tell you what, let's clear this container and we'll put in 10 particles and we'll uh, hit start and we'll play this. So the first thing you need to do is see this movie and you need to see this Boltzmann's distribution. More particularly you need to see the Boltzmann's distribution and imagine the movie. So um, the Boltzmann's distribution says some, a very small number should be moving really fast and you should see a very small number that are moving very slow and you should see a big bunch that have some in-between speeds. Okay, so next we'll take Boltzmann's away and we're going to go over to here. We're going to pause this and we're going to put in four of the other particles, so of the BCs. And we're going to give these particles a chance to move around and we're going to give the A's a chance to bump into the BCs and react. So we'll hit play and we're going to hit stop here because you need to understand what this graph is saying. Um, and I think I actually would like to lower this because just for my purposes, great. All right. So this graph, uh, how do we read this? Okay, so we've got a certain amount. The green says the total average energy. So let's take the average energy being, I don't know, 20 units of energy. That means that just for the yellows, let's say, um, uh, the yellows, total average is 20, there's 10 of them, so there's 200 units of energy to be distributed, see, to be distributed throughout these particles. And if we still go with 20 units of uh, energy, 20 units of energy need to be distributed among these particles as well. If you want to get picky, you would treat all 14 particles from the same standpoint of Boltzmann's, um, but we're not going to be that picky. So the other thing that you need to see is the how far it is from here to here. And I notice that this is maybe, and I'm going to do steps here, so I'm going to go one, two, three, maybe almost four. So if this is 20 units of energy, I'm going to, I'm going to describe this as 80 units of energy. What this graph says is in order for these particles and these particles to become these particle arrangements, we're going to need 80 units of energy. And I'm reading 80 assuming this is arbitrarily 0 and this is arbitrarily 80 and this is 20. So how many particles have 80 units, sorry, so we need a combined 80 units of energy. We could get that through 40 and 40 obviously. We could get it 50 and 30. We could get 30 and 50. We could get 10 and 70. We could have 5 and 75. Any combination of energies 
are, that add up to 80 will be enough to push these things over the threshold and then we're going to get this. So I'm going to hit play and this may take a while so um, uh, from a video standpoint you're going to see me in a second. I'm going to put a stopwatch on. I think there may even be a stopwatch and we'll put a stop stopwatch on and I'll see you in a, in a while. Alright, we're back and it's been over a minute already and we still don't have any particles at all that have bumped into each other and rearranged to form the A, B plus C complex. So now we'll ask and answer the question, why not? And the short answer is, and it's a, it's a small answer but it's got a lot of ideas embedded in it, so um, make sure you get them all. The short answer is because we haven't had any favorable or we haven't yeah we haven't had any favorable collisions between these particles and these particles so now we need to deconstruct the idea of a favorable collision. A favorable collision means that these combined particles need to have enough energy and arbitrarily we're setting this at let's say 80 units of energy if this value here is 0 and that gap in there is 20. So we needed 20, uh, 80 units of energy and we needed to have the correct orientation. And maybe we just don't have enough energy. They just, the likelihood, see, the likelihood, number of particles, not very many, a lot. So there just aren't enough particles that contain, let's say, 50 units of energy and another that contain 30 units of energy. So there's so that's what we mean when we say it's not a favorable. There's not enough favorable uh, collisions happening. So how can we increase the number of favorable collisions? Well, assuming that we're just not being able to go over the hump, let's increase our average energy. If we increase our average energy, what we'll end up doing is let's say we put in and we'll drag this up to maybe this level right in here. So we'll put in 40. That's a total average energy, which means we now have 400 units of energy to spread out through the yellow things and whatever for 160 units of energy to spread out through these others. So now we're going to have a lot more particles, a lot more yellow particles moving faster and a lot more of these moving faster, which means the combined um, collisions of faster and faster will give us perhaps a col combined energy or collision energy of let's say 80 units. So we'll hit play and we'll increase the temperature which is to say we'll make them move faster and we'll see what happens. And you can see that a lot of them are moving a lot faster and the consequence of that is the greater likelihood that these particles are going to collide and ha favorably have enough energy and of course the correct orientation. So I'm going to hit uh, pause for you. Oh, we've already had one already. And I'm going to stay with the stopwatch. So here we go. I'll see you in a while. We'll reset this. Great. See you in a bit. All right, so it's been about a minute and a half so far, and look at what we've got. We'll hit pause here. We've got two solos up in here, and we've got two combos of A, B, and we still have two of these that haven't reacted. So what's our read, or what's the interpretation of that? We now have a, and the answer is this, we now have a higher total energy, which means we have more of these yellow particles moving faster than before. We also have more of these particles, reactant particles, we normally call these reactant particles and product reading left to right. So we have more of these particles moving faster, more of these particles moving faster, which means we have a greater likelihood, probability, we have a greater likelihood of a favorable collision because we need 80 units of um, uh, energy for uh, arbitrary sake. Now, however though, it works kind of both ways because now let's look at it from the reverse standpoint. From the reverse standpoint, we've got some C's and we have some AB's. We still have a total energy here of let's say 40 units of energy. But here's the darn thing. AB's and C's, they don't need a total of they don't need a total of 80 units of energy. They only need an extra amount of, let's say, I don't know, maybe this gap in here is maybe 30 units of energy. 
So at the same time these particles may be bumping into each other and forming this arrangement, it's also possible that these particles are going to bump into each other and form this arrangement. So what we're going to do is we're going to track this particle. Some of you track this particle and some of you track this particle. So I don't, you know what, everyone whose birthday is before July, you track this particle and anyone whose birthday is after July or July or after you track this particle. And we're going to see whether or not this collides into one of these and basically undoes reading right to left or whether or not this collides into one of these and we can step our way through here and I'm just gonna step our way through so we're tracking these things so if these two particles hit in just the right way and they only need an extra 30 units of energy compared to what they're normally traveling with and that seems pretty likely that if they do bump into each other they're going to um, rearrange to this and let's talk about likelihood so the extra the likelihood of these things just having a little bit of extra unit of energy and going back to this arrangement seems like a greater possibility than these having an extra 80 units of energy and reforming these. Anyway, let's go back and you're going to track these and you're going to track these. We're going to hit play. Alright, I'm going to pause that and that's one of you, the things that I want you to play with is how much do you have to play with this and how much do you have to play with this and this and this and this in order to get some of these particles some of these particles to bump into these particles and essentially for the reaction to go the other way so one more time to see what that play uh, uh, to see how you would play with that let's clear this container let's start with maybe 10 of these and let's start with maybe you know what there were only four of those last time so I think I'll put in a few more I'll put in six there and I'll hit play and I know that I'll get a reaction in this direction more quickly if I increase the temperature. So I think I'll put the temperature up to about here. And now we're looking to see single grays. And once we create some single grays, I'd like to see whether or not those single grays kind of undo and become BCs. So here we've got a gray and we're going to try to play around with these values and we're going to try to get a situation, you are going to try to get a situation with the, raising the temperature here and playing with these numbers in order to get the reaction to go in the reverse direction. Okay, so how does that have to anything to do with activation energy? Activation energy is the amount of energy that these two things need in order to get what we call this the, the hump and notice that in the forward direction here these two things are going to need a lot more energy than the reverse reaction which is these particles only need a relatively smaller amount to get over the hump and to go this way so the concept of equilibrium is not that we're going to end up with equal amounts of these two things but rather the concept of equilibrium is that once all of these things have basically had a chance to um, initially kind of reorganize themselves there's going to be a point at which however many of these are breaking up and forming these is exactly equal to the rate at which these are breaking up and forming these. It's the rates that are equal, the rate of formation and unformation. It's not the amounts.